So one of the newer tools for managing Windows along with Server Manager is the Windows Admin Center. Remember we talked in a previous video about when you open up Server Manager for the first time it pops up that little message box up here that says check out Windows Admin Center. Alright, let's take a minute and actually check out the Windows Admin Center. Now, I'm going to hop back and forth between a couple of screens here. So I have my RDP session to my server, and then over here I've got on my desktop a web browser screen. Now, the reason we've got both of them is because Windows Admin Center doesn't actually come installed in Windows Server. So it's a separate download that we've got to go get. So we can find it easily enough if we just do a search for a Windows Admin Center. Center, there we go. We're going to find the home page for Windows Admin Center. And we're going to find a link to download it. Now that download uh, Windows Admin Center link actually takes us to the Microsoft Evaluation Center which is where we go to download evaluations for everything, right? So Windows Server 2022, Admin Center, Server 2019, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then, you know, a bunch of different products up here as well. So, what we want is the Windows Admin Center. And even though this is the Evaluation Center, notice my evaluation is set to unlimited, unlike my servers where I've got a 120-day evaluation. Also notice I'm downloading as an MSI. So I'm going to click continue and then I would fill all this out and then click continue to download the file for me. Now I've already done that and I have copied that file over to my server. Right here is my MSI file. So I'm going to double click to install that. Now, couple of things here. Number one, Windows Admin Center really, really, really is designed to be running a domain environment. And I've got a little bit of an odd situation here because I'm doing, I've just installed the server. It's not in a domain. My workstation is in a domain. So there's going to be some little things that we've got to jump through here. But typically what you'd want to do is you would install this in a domain environment. Now, you can install this a couple of different ways. Let me go and hit the accept terms, next, required diagnostic data will send to Microsoft, but I don't want to use Microsoft Update. Okay, here we go. So I'm installing Windows Admin Center on Windows Server. Now, there's two different ways I can do this. If I install it on this server, this is considered a gateway server. And what we mean by that is Windows Admin Center, we run it over a web interface, right? So what I'll do in a gateway installation is I'll install it on a server, and then I'll have a bunch of different, let's say I've got five or six different network admins. All of them can point their web browser to the gateway server. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. And they'll all be able to access Windows Admin Center. Now that gateway server is considered a gateway because that Windows Admin Center, like Server Manager, can be used to manage a variety of different servers. So I can just point it to, you know, 15, 20 different servers, 50 servers, however however many, and then this server is going to function as a gateway to access all of those. Now the alternative is, you can see that right here, I can install on a PC and manage directly from it. Now that works, and again, I can you know, add 15, 20, 50, however many servers to Windows Admin Center and manage them all, but really I can only do that from that PC. So if you're doing this in an environment where you're going to want multiple people have multiple admins, then you're probably going to want to do a gateway server environment. And you're probably going to want to set up your gateway server on a secondary server, not something, not like a domain controller or something like that. All right, so I'm doing a gateway server installation, so I'm going to click Next. I want to allow Windows Admin Center to modify this machine's trusted host settings. And I want to automatically update the Windows Admin Center. I can also choose to allow WinRM, so Windows Remote Management over HTTPS only, Probably not a bad idea. I'm not going to worry about that right now because it's just a demo and not a secure environment. All right, select a port number. Now, Windows Admin Center runs over SSL. The default port for SSL is 443, which is going to be just fine. Unless I have something else running here that's already one interrupt server using SSL. Then I can choose a different port number. Okay couple of other things here. I'm going to generate a self-signed SSL certificate, which is going to be fine, but there's going to be a couple of issues with it. 
and this is going to be a big one, this certificate will expire in 60 days. This is not intended to be a long-term solution. Instead, what you'll typically do is use an SSL certificate installed on this computer. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to have Active Directory certificate services running in your domain. You'd want to use that to generate an SSL certificate. You'd want to install that SSL certificate on this machine, and then you would use that certificate instead. But since we're doing it as a demo, we're going to go ahead and do self-sign so we don't have to go through all of that. And then we're going to redirect HTTP port 80 traffic to HTTPS and click install. All right, this will get our install running for us. Now, if you install it on a local machine, you're going to go through a lot of the same things. You won't, I mean, you'll still choose a port number, but it won't be 443. It's going to use another port number because it's not designed for you to connect to that gateway from other devices. You're only going to use it locally. So that becomes a little bit of an issue. Um, but again, it's fine if you're going to be the only admin, uh, system admin using the Windows Admin Center. Um, the other thing it will do is it'll need to make sure you've got WinRM running on the machines that are being managed and the uh, host that you're managing it from. Uh, and it'll also add a shortcut to the admin center. Doing this in a, that's if you do it on a local PC. Doing this as a gateway install, it's not going to do that. We're not going to have a shortcut to manage it. We're going to go back to our workstation and we're going to use a web browser to access it and manage it. Okay, now our installation is moving right along. It's going to take just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video real quick and we're gonna pick it up once our installation is finished. Hey, what do you know? It just finished it. Okay, cool. We're ready to connect from a PC. So open this URL in a browser on a PC. So it would be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the machine name colon 443. Now remember I said this is supposed to work in a domain environment. It will work in a work group environment, which is kind of what I've got here. But ideally, I would have done this on a machine that had a fully qualified domain name and had DNS resolution and all of that set up. Now, I don't have any of that but I can use the IP address on my server. So I'm gonna go to my web browser and I'm back on the web browser on my local machine. I'm no longer on my server. And I'm gonna go to HTTPS, TTPS colon, and my IP address is 5.12 colon 443. Now, the connection is not private. This is, you know, the certificate authority is invalid. It's actually not a problem. It's because I'm using a self-signed certificate on the server. So my workstation doesn't recognize that. Remember I said there were a couple of issues. This is one of those issues. But I'm not going to worry about that because, you know, I'm in a local network and I know where the self-signed certificate came from. So I am going to proceed boldly going forward. Log in. Again, if I was in a network where I was logged into my workstation with administrative access, let me put in the right password, uh, then I wouldn't necessarily have that issue. If I was using a signed trusted certificate, I wouldn't have had that first issue, but we can make it work here for our demo. So here's our Windows Admin Center coming up, and you'll see right here, close that. All right. Here is my server. Now I can add additional servers, connect, manage, as, remove. <clears throat> yes, I know. I'm going to show you how to add a server real quick. Now I don't have anything else to add, but I'm just going to show it to you here. So I can add servers. I can add Windows PCs. I can add clusters. Uh, I can add Azure VMs. So I can add lots of things into my Windows Admin Center. So let's say I wanted to add another server. I would click Add, and then... From here, it's going to pop up here in a second. I can put in a server name or IP address. I can import from a list, or I could search Active Directory if I was part of an Active Directory domain. So the idea is I will add all of these different things. And notice from the previous list, I can add clients, I can add servers, I can add whatever. So it actually becomes a very powerful tool. And they just populate right on down here, and I could add a whole bunch of stuff to manage. Now, to manage a server, 
I'm going to click on my IT146 server. Notice it says it's the gateway. And here are some of my management options for the server. So I've got all of my tools over here. Over here, I can restart, shut down, enable disk metrics, which can be a little draining on the system. So don't do that if you don't have to. But if you need to manage it, you can. Edit the computer ID. It'll show me the computer name, the domain, the operating system, disk space, memory, versions, processors. Here is my performance utilization on that server, so CPU and memory and Ethernet utilization. So that's all in my overview. I've got a bunch of Azure stuff. I can manage certificates, devices. I can view events, manage files and sharing, the firewall, look at installed apps, local users and groups, networks, the performance monitor, PowerShell directly to it, manage processes on it, manage the registry, remote desktop to it, manage roles and features, look at scheduled task services storage. So you can see here that this admin center actually gives us a lot of capability to monitor and manage these devices. Here's my roles and features. I can install, uninstall all from here. So lots and lots and lots of capability inside um, the Windows Admin Center. And the best thing about this is I can very quickly and easily let me go back to my Windows Admin Center. I can very quickly and easily manage multiple devices in multiple different ways. Server manager, computer management, cluster management from a web interface. I do want to show you one thing real quick just because this makes me smile. I'm going to go back into my server. Now, we'll do a lot of remote management using either PowerShell or remote desktop. And notice right here I have remote desktop capability and I've got PowerShell capability. So I'm going to click PowerShell because I'm already RDP'd to it. And here is PowerShell working on that remote device. Machine name IT146 and there's my PowerShell environment. So <clears throat> that is a real quick introduction to installing, configuring, and then using the Windows Admin Center.